Well, hello, 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 everybody. Good morning and happy Friday to you. I know it's a surprise. I I took a vacation. I, I don't even know if vacation is a good word to put, a good way to put it. I took a hiatus. I took a sabbatical um, from my Facebook Lives uh, back in January. And I have spent the last, the, the, the bulk of 2023 reading, studying, and writing. And this morning, God provoked my heart and prompted me to share some revelation that he has been releasing to me. And I just wanted to hop on a little bit and give you a taste of what God has been talking about. And the word that he gave me this morning was, uh, actually the last several days, he says, we are now in the era of recompense. We are in the season era, the time, the window of recompense. And uh, for those people who don't know what the word recompense is, I actually brought my notes. Let me grab my notes here behind me. I'm sitting here in my backyard. Isn't this great? I love my backyard with my, had an, had an addition done. I got, had to have a, have a bench added. I'm actually sitting on my, my bench in my backyard. And hi, Steve. <laughs> so um, good morning. Good morning to all of you and to everybody that's on. But I wanted to share what the Lord spoke to me. And I, it's really important. So the word recompense means an era of compensation, reward for loss or harm suffered, money that resources, recouping losses, restitution that is made. And we are in a season of recompense. Now, let me go ahead and break that down a little bit because you hear people saying all the time that um, that the, this is that we are to discern the times like the sons of Issachar. We hear people mentioning the tribe of Issachar because Issachar, that particular tribe, had a unique um, capacity. Okay, and one of the things that they were able to do, it says that they were able to discern the times so they so that Israel would know what they should do. Well, the the name Issachar means recompense. And I didn't make the connection between this season, this hour of recompense, until I was listening to a sermon yesterday by Charles Capps, a very old message, and he was talking about how active, you know, activating your breakthrough, financial breakthrough. And I know there are lots of people who are still struggling. There are people who are fearful because we know that these these are not these are unusual times. We are in the end times. So it's important when we hear that we are in an era, a time, a window of recompense that God endeavors to make, to replace, to pay back his children. Well, the name Issachar, Issachar was the ninth son of Jacob. And the name Issachar means recompense. And understanding that in this unique hour as the ages fold up as we come to the end of the church age it's important that we have the capacity of the tribe of Issachar which is to discern the times that means looking at the circumstances looking at the situation being able to mark the difference between what's going on now and what was going on 24 months ago what's going on now and what was happening three years ago what's going on now and what was happening 10 years ago and not only being able to discern or differentiate the difference between what's happening now but knowing what do I need to do differently now that would that wouldn't have applied three years ago what do I need to do what what was happening three five seven years ago it was a totally different world it was a totally different country and so understanding that tells you that there is a level of insight that you have to have. So Issachar, who is the, who is the father of the tribe that knew what it, that knew how to discern the times and knew what Israel ought to do, had four, he had four sons. And the four sons of Issachar really had prophetic names. The first son of Issachar, his name was Tola. And the name Tola means worm. Now, when you first hear that phrase, you hear talking about worm, you go, worm, what is, that, what is that about? But a worm lives below the surface. If you want to know the condition of an environment, then you want to know what condition the soil is in. And the ones who know the soil best are the worms. 
the worms are below the surface they can tell you what minerals are there they can tell you but by looking at the worms you know how rich how vital how fertile what that soil can and cannot produce and so when you see the name of the son of Issachar it is a prophetic message to our time this time that we are in this this moment this air this this window of recompense that we are in a time we are in the window of time just before the tribulation before it advances so there are things that are happening now that are available now there are windows of opportunity now there is an anointing now that will not exist in any other time in the in, in in the history of mankind and it is those who can look below the surface like tola like a worm discern what is available and how do you use what is available in this window of time that won't be available in any other time in the history of mankind so Tola, the first son of Issachar's name, meant worm. And it's a prophetic snapshot of what it means to delve below the surface, to dig deep, looking at circumstances, looking at everything you have to do, looking at your family, looking at your business, looking at your home, looking at your finances, looking at your church, looking at you have to have the capacity like Tola to look below the surface and discern, make distinctions, discriminate between what's going on and what does it mean to you now the second son of Issachar's name was Puva Puva is a derivative or it relates his name relates to the to the Hebrew letter pay and the Hebrew letter pay means mouth when you can look below the surface and see things that are not readily visible to other people, you now have the, uh, you have the responsibility of communicating what you see, what's coming, what's, down, what's coming up the pike, what's, what's happening, and what you need to do, what actions you need to take. You can anticipate consequences that other people can't recognize you can foresee trends that other people can't distinguish and when you can see it it's one thing to be able to see it and recognize it but it's another thing to have the capacity of the second son of Issachar which is to speak it to decree it to say it to create opportunities that others can't can't see by decreeing things and establishing them you have the capacity to recognize uh, what other people uh, don't, what they don't, they can't even, they don't even see it. They don't even discern it. They don't even perceive that it's there. And so by understanding the first son of Issachar sees below the surface, the second son of Issachar can now speak what they see with the level of capacity, insight, and wisdom that helps others get in position helps others take advantage of opportunities help others recognize the recompense hour that we're in and then they are able to communicate that in a way that people can take that information do something with it and get themselves in position for where we are and where we're headed Okay, now the third son of Issachar, and again, the four sons of Issachar are a prophetic message to our time. It's not just about discerning the time, it is recognizing what this hour is leading up to and what the happenings, the trends that you see in the media, the trending, you see people trending talking about UFOs trending talking about uh talking about uh what's that thing in the sky why is that there people are seeing things and having the capacity to look at that now there are four things there are four things that allow you four clues that allow you to see these trends and know where things are going and understand what you need to do about it and then so recognizing it and then speaking about it with clarity, with insight, wisdom, helping people understand what actions they need to be taking and what you need to be looking for. Now, the third son of Issachar was Jas Jashub, and or J or Jaob, which there are two pronunciations for it. But his name means 
he will return. Remember what I told you that the four sons of Issachar, that their father's name is recompense, but each of their names is a prophetic message to this window of time. So Tola, Puva, Jashub, Tola means worm, seeing below the surface. Puva or pay means mouth, being able to speak with understanding wisdom and insight about what you see that others can't see, what you know that others don't know, what you see coming that others can see coming. You have answers that people need and having the capacity like the second son of Issachar to communicate that in a way that people can get it is powerful. The third son of Issachar is Jashub, which means he will return. That means everything that we see happening, all the things that we see lining up, all the clues that we see, the hints that um, the cultures, the, 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 the uh, what do we want to call them? The elites are all the little hit in your windows and messages that they're sending out. Those are really clues that God is allowing. Now they have their indicate their message indicators, but God also has his. You see, there are two kingdoms that are clashing right now. And as time continues, they're going to clash even more, which is why it's really important for us to get this. Okay, so Jashub means he will return. Who will return? Jesus is coming. And there is an urgency that those who hear, recognize, discern, and distinguish these things see that others don't. So if you are not tuned in to that urgency, if you're not aware of what's happening and what's going on, then you may want to reconnect with the Kyle Circle because that's what we're going to be teaching. That's what we're getting ready to launch back into. That's why I'm back on here, okay? So the third son of Issachar was Jashub. He will return. That's, what his, that's literally what his name meant. And then the fourth son of Issachar, his name was Shimron. Now, Scripture tells us that those who are attentive are watchmen. Well, the fourth son of Issachar's name, Shimron, means to watch. It says in Ezekiel 3, 17, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. Now, why am I on here today? I'm on here today because it's really important that we understand the prophetic message that's in this. Now, I mentioned earlier, I watched a video by Charles Caps that really made a connection for me. In this old video by Charles Caps, and I actually did a clip for it, I'll share it on my page later. But in that clip, Charles Caps talks about uh, talks about recompense and he says that he believed that right before the tribulation in the hours before the uh, the tribulation that there would be a great move of God a great of course there would be a great revival but it cost money for revival it cost it cost resource for revival it cost provision for revival and so God is setting people up to make you a Goshen He's setting you up. He's, he, is, he has made preparation for those people who are recognizing what God is doing. You're in an, a time, a window of recompense where God is repaying. He is increasing resources so that he can manifest the provision necessary as we are walking in this window of time before the tribulation, there's work to be done. There's a, a huge move. There, you've been hearing people for years talking about the billion soul harvest. Okay, and that's just the ones that are coming. That doesn't even talk about the ones that are already born again, who are already in the kingdom, but who don't know the ways of the kingdom. And so kingdom readiness, and that's where this lesson comes from. It comes from my teaching series, The 40 Elements of Kingdom Readiness. And so if you take the names of Issachar and his four sons and you combine them, then what you will get is something like this. Like sons of Issachar, we must discern the time. We must mark the difference between this window of time and all other periods of history, recognizing that we are in a unique period time frame before the tribulation and the rapture and the return of Jesus Christ. To discern means we must dig deeper, looking below the surface to see that which is not readily in view. 
then we must speak puva or pay with wisdom the things that we see helping others know what actions they need to take when you hear them and the government talking about ufos that they have denied existence for decades when you hear them talking about climate change and you recognize that there are things when you see them the the our our governmental leadership when you see our president making the effort to get israel to divide their land that is a curse any nation that tries to get israel to divide their land you will see time and time again if anytime israel has to divide their land there will always be negative repercussions for those governments those nations that for, that try to force Israel into a two state. It's and I tell you every single time any governmental leader, any of our presidents, any of our leaders have tried to make Israel divide their land, there have been negative consequences in our own country. Okay, the, one of the last times that happened when they were trying to force Israel to divide their land was when Hurricane Katrina hit. About 10 days after the, our governmental leaders were trying to force Israel to divide their land, while they were forcing Israel to break their, to move their people off that territory, then we see a, a hurricane in the Gulf, not bigger than any hurricane in the history of hurricanes forming. And it did a level of devastation unknown, unmatched by any devastation by any hurricane okay now that's just one and every time so you can mark this if our cut if our government forces israel to break or divide their land and to come into it you will see there will be more huge natural disasters on our territory unlike anything we have seen before and you can't pray that off there are some things you can't pray off. That's why the sons of Issachar, when they tell you there's some things you, there are some, when we pray, there are some things you can stop and there are some things you just have to trust God to get you out the way of. There are some things we can prevent, but there are some things that are just a part of the order of things. And God wants you to know, look, I've, I've, I've set a hedge of protection around you. I cover you, I keep you, or I tell you how to get out the way. So, like sons of Issachar, we must discern the times. To discern, we must dig deep below the surface, looking to see that which is not readily in view. Then we must speak, puva, with wisdom, the things that we see. We reveal the truth of our discoveries so that we understand the situations more clearly. You need to understand, why are they telling you there are UFOs that they have denied existed all along? Why are they telling you now? Why are they talking about that now? Why the, Why is CERN doing doing these 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 colliding events in Switzerland? Why are they doing it now? Why now? Why now? We must make we must understand situations more cl clearly, anticipating the consequences. There are consequences that come with the choices we make on an individual level, and there are consequences that come with the choices our government makes. And that's why we have to pray for the leaders. And if they won't come into alignment with the purposes, the plan, and the will of God, we need to pray that God move them and give us some leaders that will. Okay? And finally, we make sound decisions rooted in wisdom and good judgment. Next, we must be re recognized that there is an urgency and we have to prepare for the imminent return of Jesus. That's Jashub. That's the third son of Issachar. His name meant he will return. Everything we do is to facilitate the return of Jesus. Everything we, all, of, all your business, your wealth, everything you're doing. And you have to know how does what I am doing right now, how does hiring this business consultant, how does, how does what I'm doing right now facilitate the return of Jesus? How is it supporting him? Okay. And finally, we watch world events in light of the 30% of scriptures that are Bible prophecy. And we do it all by the Spirit of God who leads us into all truth, who shows us things to come, who downloads in us the mind of God. That's what it means to be discerning. And in the best time to have discernment is when everybody else is being deceived. 
when all the nations are being deceived, when people are being confused, when, and Jesus said in the last days, he says, uh, he says, uh, you know, don't be deceived. These are all of the things that are going to be going on. And there are things that I am also doing for, that I am doing. So why is recompense really important right now? Because the Lord sings, if you know how to recognize what I'm doing, if you know how to be in sync with the biblical prophecies, if you know how to know what actions you need to be taking in light of that insight, then you can be, you can participate in recompense. You get to participate. You get to be a part of it. You get to take the resource that God is unleashing. He said, he, he says that he, the wealth of the wicked was laid up for the just. I wrote a book a few years ago called Wicked Wealth, How God Transfers the Wealth of the Sinner. He is transferring that wealth because of the four names of Issachar, because he has people who are looking below the surface, recognizes that God wants to make you a Goshen. He wants to prepare you. He wants to make you a storehouse. He wants to put provision in your hand because the day is coming like, like it did for Joseph. Joseph said, you know what? We got seven years of plenty and I'm going to store up. And right now we are in that window. We are in a window where God is providing and releasing provision. It, there is no, there really is no lack. All lack is a created fallacy by government where they just, they create scenarios that make it appear as if there's not enough. But there is an abundance. There's plenty of room for all the people. We don't need to call the people. We don't need to cut back on the people. We just need to use the resources and the governments, the wicked ones that are that that have that have taken more that take more than their share and that, that present things as if other people don't have a right to it. But God loves all people. So remember, in this hour of recompense, it's gonna intensify. Because if he says in the scriptures that that people will not be able to buy nor sell without the mark well that means that they have there's going to be they're going to have something to buy and there's going to be something to sell there's going to be some provision and right up into that god is saying look i want to prepare and equip you now I need you, I need you, believer, to be in position now. I need you to have resources available. I need you to have, I need, to, I need you to understand how to take advantage of recompense. And so at the end of the month, uh, uh, at the end of this, well, the third week, the third Sunday night, I'll get, the, get it posted. I'm going to be doing, a, I'm going to be doing a Zoom a class where I'm going to be teaching this more in-depthly. Some things I can say on here, some stuff I don't say on here because... The day is coming when we won't be able to talk on here at all. And you better have a place where you can go to get you some wisdom and to help someone where someone can help you connect the dots. And that's one of that's one of my assignments. I help people connect the dots. Well, Steve, I'm so grateful. Thank you for being on here with me. I had not planned this. I hadn't advertised it. I just heard Holy Spirit say, you need to do it now. So I didn't I didn't even get out of my gym clothes. I went to went to my, my training workout this morning. I came home, no makeup, nothing. I just put on my cap and I got on here because there is an urgency. Jesus is coming. And this kind of insight is what you need to access so you know what to do so you will be able to discern distinguish differentiate discriminate what's happening what does it mean and what do you need to do about it when you see things happening with israel what does it mean and what do you need to do about it how do you need to pray how do we need to pray and right now we really need to pray for our governmental leaders because they are making choices related to israel that will be detrimental to this country and that's just the truth. Okay? God says, I will bless those who bless Israel, and those who curse Israel will come under a cursed state. So we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you guys for hopping on here with me. Do me a favor. Go ahead and share this with someone who needs to need. So what did we talk about today? We talked about this is the prophetic word is we are in a window, a time, a moment where God is saying, I am releasing a recompense. I am repaying. I am, I am, I'm helping people recoup losses. I am showing people where resource is so that they can tap into it and they can begin to, they can begin to set themselves in position to be a Goshen where there will be provision, where there can be housing, where there can be resources sources that people are going to need just like Joseph there were in in the in the in Egypt there were 7 years of abundance and much provision and then there were 7 additional years of extreme lack 
extreme lack in hardship. Well, we we have a similar situation. We are in the window of time before the tribulation. We don't know how long it is. I don't know. But that doesn't mean you don't do anything. No, that means you speed up. You get it with the program. You partner with God. Because there is a reward available for those who hear his voice, who obey his voice, who follow his instructions, who position themselves to be a Goshen, who position themselves to be a storehouse, who position themselves to, su to support people and individuals who won't have resources, who don't know this information, just like the sons of Issachar. Tora, Tora, Tola, you look below the surface. Puva, you say what you see. Recognizing that Jesha, he will return, and Shama. That's why we need to watch, we need to pray, and we need to prepare. Well, that's it for today. Thank you guys for hopping on here with me. I love you, love you, you love you. You know what I say until next time. You make it a terrific day. Bye-bye.